Hi there, I'm Craig. This video focuses on developing your understanding of the Merriman Foundation Investment Calculator. Feel free to follow along as I provide an orientation to the calculator, describe how the parameters impact the calculations, and present a few scenarios. This lifetime investment calculator makes the foundation's work dynamic, so you can model your own scenarios. It's built off of the fine-tuning tables that were updated earlier this year. You can dig into the foundation's recommended strategies, best advice, and see how your plan would have played out in the past. This is one in a series of videos that provide an introduction and in-depth look at how different scenarios may have played out over time. Please visit paulmerriman.com for more information, podcasts, and videos. As always, it's important to note that this information presents the past. You're working with one of an infinite number of sequence of returns. The future is completely unknown, but the past 51 years have had a period of, have had a number of significant major events that may happen during your investment's lifetime. There have been long bull and bear markets, multiple wars, and varying periods of high and low inflation. All of these have had an impact on the market, and this calculator allows you to dig in, learn from it, and assess your own risk tolerance. You can answer questions like, what would have happened if I had invested some money when my child or my grandchild was born? How would that have changed if I invested a little more or maybe started a little bit later? You can also see how major bear markets would have impacted retirement and view the volatility of different asset allocations for each of the Merriman Foundation best advice strategies. With that, I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. So we're gonna start at the Paul Merriman Foundation website. This is the Lifetime Investment Calculator page. It provides an overview of the calculator, uh, the calculator itself, and then some information on parameters, uh, each of these parameters in the right-hand side, frequently asked questions, and links to the associated uh, videos and additional content. So what we're looking at here is the calculator itself. Uh, as, as you'll see, uh, it's oriented kind of left to right. On the far left-hand side, we have year, the sequence, contribution. Then we have our allocations, Right now, we by default present three of them, a 40% stock allocation, a 60% stock allocation, 100% stock allocation, and then we compare that against the, uh, the S&P 500 index as has so often been done by the foundation. Each of these parameters on the right-hand side, uh, you can adjust and you can toggle to impact the information that's displayed here in the main view. To orient you, uh, you're able to scroll uh, top to bottom, right, and left to right, like I've already shown. We also have a couple of buttons down here in the bottom right. The most important one allows you to do full screen, but you could also download uh, the calculator in multiple formats, but we'll get to that later. I wanted to actually start here on the strategy. Okay, so these strategies map perfectly to the fine tuning tables. If you're not familiar with the foundation's work, uh, the fine tuning tables are updated every year and it's under the best advice column of the, uh, of the website, uh, fine tuning your asset allocation, right? And these tables present percentages for each strategy. So when I click on this, you can see the static PDF that uh, is, was used for the podcast. This PDF includes percentages of returns for each uh, asset allocation, starting with 0% uh, stocks, 100% bonds, and then going over to 100% stocks and the 0% uh, 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 bonds. So we use these percentages to as the baseline, and then we are using the calculator so that you can enter your own numbers uh, and evaluate different scenarios based off of this, the percentages that are in these fine tuning tables. The numbers here in the strategy actually map to the tables that were presented uh, in that podcast. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you go and listen to the podcast actually before this, uh, before this video. So pause where you are and, uh, and uh, go and listen to that podcast. You'll see that the table number here maps over to the strategy. So table three, that's in the PDF, is the same percentages that we have in the, uh, the S&P 500. Table 4A, 5, uh, 6, etc., all map appropriately here. 
So in order to basically fit this in the column, uh, I've come up with a, a shorthand. Uh, so the table 4A is the ultimate buy and hold worldwide, 50-50 uh, US and 50% international strategy. Table 4B is again, the ultimate buy and hold worldwide, but this time we're looking at the 70% in the US and 30% international. Each of the others, you can see four fund US strategy, four fund worldwide, 50-50 and 70-30 is, which would be table 6B. Table seven is all value worldwide, 50-50. 7B is 70-30, of course. Table eight, A and B are all small cap value worldwide. And table nine is all small cap value US. So this uh, first parameter uh, maps to these PDFs appropriately. appropriately. This is the 50-50 fine tuning tables. And then when you go back, you can actually download and look at the 70-30 split. For, uh, for those tables. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and uh, open this up in full screen. This allows, you know, it's very small um, when, you're, uh, when you're working with it in the website. So when we make it full screen, we're able to see many more numbers and we're able to adjust the parameters. So I'm gonna start in the top left-hand corner describing these three columns, uh, year, sequence, and contribution. The year presents just an ordinal number uh, based off of the dura duration that you select. By default, we start uh, with the first year and we present 51 years, uh, the full sequence of returns that we have data for from 1970 to 2020. Uh, the sequence of returns is an important uh, variable or a parameter that you can adjust. This, uh, you know, we have the history from 1970 until 2020, and different things have played out through these years. Earlier, I said, you know, there are periods of high inflation or, you know, deep, deep uh, losses in the market. You can adjust the sequence of returns to start at any of the, the years for which we have historical data. And then the calculator will loop through back again to 1970. So if, for example, you wanted to model uh, what, what would have happened if I retired in a year before huge losses, right? You know, you could, you could start your sequence of returns at 1972. Or if you had a child uh, born on a particular year, you could start that, their sequence of returns on the actual year that they were born. Right? So let's say someone was born in 2000, you could select the first sweet sequence sweet year and then see how the returns had played on from that, uh, that point forward. So this variability gives you flexibility in your analysis. The year will always be the same. It'll always be an ordinal value and it allows you to kind of reference in the different scenarios. I'll get into that uh, a little bit more later. The third column from the left is the contribution column. So this column allows you to uh, determine if, if you want to add a contribution so that you could model periods of accumulation, right? In the parameters on the right-hand side, you can add the contribution starting value. You can choose whether or not you want to scale that contribution with inflation. And you're able to determine how long you uh, expect to have contributions. The subsequent columns to the right are your equity and fixed income allocation, right? How much gas and how much brakes, uh, as Paul likes to say. The bonds are the brakes and the, uh, the stocks are the gas. So by default, we show 40% stocks and 60% bonds. 60% uh, stocks, 40% bonds, 100% stocks, 0% bonds, and uh, a benchmark against the S&P 500 index. As I showed, you're able to kind of toggle the, the strategies so that you could see how the different strategies play out in each of these asset uh, allocations. Right now, we're looking at the US four fund uh, uh, strategy that we've, uh, that, we've been, that we've presented in the fine tuning tables. Each of these fixed income uh, and equity allocation groupings presents the end of year balance the dollar return and the percent return. Uh, the end of year balance 
is a calculation based on the starting value in the first in the first field, right? We have the ability to enter the starting value. And then we assume that we add whatever contribution that's added at the beginning of the year, so on January 1st. And then our starting value by default is $100,000. We uh, let that experience the percent uh, change in that asset in that year for that uh, allocation. So in this year, uh, basically $106,000 grew to 116,070. Uh, we calculate the return, which is uh, how much money minus the contribution uh, you made on, on the money that was invested. And then we calculate a percent return. So this chart that I'm showing you is the growth chart. It shows how money uh, would grow over time. This is one of two primary settings on the, the calculator. The other section or the other setting is called the, uh, the distribution setting. And I'll just toggle that over here on the right-hand side. Uh, right now, if I wanna show the growth chart, you know, how has money played out and grown over time, uh, I can change it to the one of the distribution options where I have a, a fixed distribution, which is a percent of the starting value, uh, the year that you begin to take it, or a, flex a flexible distribution, which every year you take the same percentage. When I flip over to distributions, you'll see that the columns have changed for each of these uh, allocations. So we still present the end of year balance, but instead of the dollar return and the percent return, we're actually showing the distribution uh, as a value and uh, the cumulative distribution or how much money you've pulled out of the, the portfolio uh, for the entire distribution period. So this uh, distribution variable on the, the parameter on the right-hand side is pretty important to, uh, to see that, that change. And it allows us some flexibility when we're modeling uh, or I guess assessing the, the past uh, the past uh, history. Now, I wanted to show you uh, what we're looking at. On the right-hand side, we've got the parameters, and this is our default setting. I'll run through each of these parameters and show you how they impact the, the different charts. And then I'll go through and show the different scenarios that I've uh, come up with to, to kind of demonstrate how we can model um, you know, a lifetime or multiple lifetimes. The first parameter, as I showed earlier, is the strategy based off of the fine tuning tables. So if you wanted to do a direct comparison, you could just flip through each of these strategies. Right now we're on the four fund US strategy, but um, what if I wanted to look at the performance of this portfolio? against a uh, all small cap value worldwide strategy. All I have to do is hit table 8A, and then you can see uh, all of the numbers have recalculated. And it's always fun to scroll to the bottom. You can see how much they've changed. I'll flip it back. And the next one is your equity and fixed income allocation. We have the ability to present uh, all, all increments from 0% stocks to 100% uh, stocks uh, in 10% increments. Uh, I, we don't do that by default because it's information overload for some people. Uh, but by toggling this, you're able to see uh, in 10% increments, what would 10% more stocks or 10% fewer stocks have uh, done to the portfolio? Right. This is a major lesson that, that Paul is often um, comes back to. You know, if you're zero percent stocks, and you know you just add ten percent stocks, what would that do to the portfolio? And as you get kind of more aggressive in your in your in your equity allocation, and you begin to determine your glide path, uh, you can you can use these different combinations to see how. Uh, you know, you could kind of model or set up your glide path to see how things would have played out over time. You can select as many of them as you want, uh, or as few, or as few as, as you want. Um, I'll actually go down and 
uh, do my 60, 40 stocks and bonds. And then I'm gonna do 100% stocks and bonds as 0% stocks. And so now you can see I've only selected two columns and it's just presenting those two columns. The next uh, parameter is a toggle between nominal and real values. So the nominal return includes inflation, right? It'll show you the dollar value in your bank account at that time, right? Uh, so if I would have invested this $100,000 for 51 years uh, with $6,000 in contributions for 20 years, this is how my bank account would have looked at the end of each year, right? If you flip it over to real, then you're able to see in today's dollars, right? We strip out the calculations for uh, inflation. And this shows you your total purchasing power that you had as if you were, if you, as if you had that money today, right? So uh, at the bottom of this thing, you know, you, the, the real value, the total purchasing power is $6 million in today's dollars. Um, if you, if you would have uh, started in 1970. And if you flip it back, then the numbers jump up to uh, 31 million, right? Which is, uh, but that 31 million doesn't have the same purchasing power as $31 million would today. So this is how you're able to, to see uh, and calculate uh, the impact of inflation on your investments. The next three fields, so first sequence year, duration, and starting value, set up the bounds of the, of the calculator. So uh, the, first, the first sequence year, as I said, allows you to identify a particular year that you want to start with so that you can model or you can see how the, how the things have performed over time. The duration shows how many years you want to uh, present, how many rows you want to present in this calculator. The maximum number is 200. So if you were to change the duration to 200 years, then you could see how these numbers have grown very, very large uh, over, over the 200 year period. Uh, you'll notice that once we get to the end of the first sequence of returns, right? So in this case, we're starting in 1970 and we have real data through 2020. We then uh, decided that we would loop through back to 1970. And this allows us to model, you know, obviously, the, these numbers will not represent the future, right? They represent the past, but this allows us to model for multiple generations, um, maybe up to five or more generations over this 200 year period. Fifth, I'll switch that back to 51 years because that's our, that's a default that we're most often looking at. The starting value allows you to assess a lump sum starting value. Uh, in this case, we just default to $100,000. The minimum value would be zero. So like if you've got nothing, you're starting out with nothing, right? You could, you could show starting out with nothing. Or if you have, you know, you wanted to say, well, right now my portfolio is X. Um, I'm going to start with that and, uh, and see how that thing would have played out if I had X amount of money in, you know, Y uh, year in the sequence of returns. Now we get into the contributions. In the next four fields, we are setting up this contribution column, right? In the contribution, you're able to add, you're able to start your contribution at any year in your, during your duration. And you can determine how, um, how long you expect to contribute that value. So the first contribution year and then the contribution duration. The contribution amount is how much you contribute to your portfolio. Again, this assumes that you add it at the beginning of the year and that contribution will play out that year's sequence, uh, that year's percentage uh, return. The fourth field uh, is, has multiple components. It allows you to scale contributions or your distributions or withdrawals with inflation. You can see we started with $6,000 in 1970 and we've chosen yes on this field, right? If you choose no, then it won't scale it with inflation. Like, let's just say that you, uh, you know, you decided that you wanted to put the IRA maximum for people who are under the age of 55. Uh, so you decide, no, I'm gonna put $6,000 in, you know, each year, 
you know, and that's it. Like, I'm not going to put any more. Then you can, you know, keep that as kind of a fixed contribution. Or if you wanted to, you know, look at the inflation value, you can on January 15th or something, you get last year's consumer price index and you can add, you know, uh, that percentage to your contribution each year. The, the next four fields focus on distributions. Right. As I said previously, we have both a fixed and the flexible distribution option. And then when you, ch when you choose one of those distributions, these other three fields um, come into play. If you choose don't calculate, then you can ignore these three fields because you're looking at the growth chart, right? You're not looking at the distribution chart. But when you do flip over to distribution, so let's say I'm gonna do a fixed distribution, which is a percentage of the starting value, and then if you choose to uh, scale that with inflation, see that's what's uh, why this is important. Then uh, that that value, whatever whatever distribution percentage you define here, will be distributed at the at the first day of the year for your um, uh, for that year. So the first distribution year defines which year you begin taking your distributions. The distribution duration, like the contribution duration, shows how long you want to take those distributions. And then the distribution percent is the percent to distribute, right? Uh, this means different things in the, fi in the fixed and flexible uh, scenarios. But in the fixed scenario, you're able to say, I'm going to take 4% of whatever the previous year's value is, and I'm gonna work from there. Uh, you can change this number to uh, anything really. So if you, wanted to, if you wanted to go more conservative, you could do 3% and see how that plays out over time, right? So uh, that shows you how much uh, you're pulling out. Uh, or you could do, what did they say, risky or very risky, 6%, 6 right? And you can you know, see how much money you pulled out uh, of the of the portfolio. I'll jump over to the flexible distribution. And in the flexible distribution, the difference here is that the distribution percent is the amount that's pulled out each year. So whatever the previous year's ending year balance was, you pull out 6% of that, of that value. So to look very specifically at this case, uh, the the value that you have here in the distribution percent is calculated from the previous year's ending balance, right? So we're going to take 6% of $2.2 million and we're gonna, uh, that's gonna be our distribution percent. And then that's taken out at the beginning of the year and whatever you have uh, at, in that balance, right? So 2.2 million minus 133 runs through the year of returns and then you get your end of year balance for this year, right? In the flexible distribution, it pulls out 6%, uh, you know, every year or whatever percent you determine here. In this case, you'll see actually that in the 20th year, we had $2.2 million. We pulled out $133,000, but we dropped the value of the portfolio for uh, whatever reason. And so we only had one hundred ninety. Uh, 1.9 million uh, dollars uh, in at the end of the year on the 21st year. So the distribution the next year is actually less, right? Because you had less value uh, in your portfolio. You had, you had less in your portfolio that year. So the, the prior year you pull out 133,000 and then this year you pull out 117,000, right? So in the flexible distribution, you can see how you know, every time you have a year where it drops, which is highlighted in red here, uh, you, the following year, you're pulling out less money because your end of year balance is less than it was the previous year. Whereas in the fixed distribution, you pull out that value. Uh, so we're, st we're still talking 6%. So you're pulling out your 6% your 6 of the $2.2 million. And, you're, and at the end of that, uh, your portfolio is down to 1.9 but you're still pulling out an inflation adjusted uh, uh, per, uh, percent on top of that 6%. So you're pulling, the next year you're pulling out $141,000 instead of 133. So this is where uh, we get into some of those scenarios where uh, you might 
uh, go down to zero if you if you have a fixed distribution at at a uh, at a risky uh, in, a, in a risky situation. Uh, in this case, it looks like you know whatever the two point two million dollars was, you know, it doesn't run down to zero. So uh, so it's you know it, it seems like it might work. It might have worked out uh, for whomever uh, is running this this situation. I wanted to show the real. Uh, you know, I wanted to toggle the real, uh, the real, the nominal or real parameter here. So this helps us see uh, the impact of inflation. So if we look at this, the purchasing power today would be fifty-five thousand dollars, right? So even though the nominal value is one hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars, in real terms, it is only able to purchase. Uh, $55,000 worth of stuff in, in today's terms. So this is a pretty good indicator for those who are uh, trying to figure out a distribution percent. You know, is $55,000 in today's terms really, uh, uh, is it enough money for me to live, right? Maybe it's more than enough, or maybe it isn't enough, right? So we can, we can adjust these uh, scenarios to, we can adjust these percentages uh, to figure out, you know, how much money in real terms do I need uh, to be able to, to succeed uh, through a full retirement. The next thing I'm going to present is the scenario modeling uh, an, an entire person's 95 year life. And the idea here is that we can see uh, what it would look like if there was a child who was born and they received $2,000 uh, the year that they were born. And that $2,000 grew for 18 years until they were 18. And then they decided to start contributing $1,000 per year to their retirement. This person works from age 18 to age 60, takes for a traditional retirement. So that's 42 years of working and contributing, scaling that $1,000 contribution year over year. And then when they hit age 60, they, uh, they distribute their, um, they begin their distributions for their lifetime. And this scenario really shows uh, how time and market is, a really is your most valuable asset. I'm gonna go ahead and reset these parameters on the right-hand side. And to do that, I just exit the full screen mode and then I refresh the page. So this kind of gets me back to the default setting. I'll go back to full screen, okay? And I'm gonna start setting up the scenario. So I'm still gonna stick with the four fund US strategy, right? But in this, in this case, I only wanna see 100% stocks and bonds, right? If, you're, if you have uh, a, new, a newborn, right, they can take unlimited risk because they're not gonna touch this money for 60 years, right? There will be taxable events along the way, but, uh, but they don't need to draw down this, these funds until then. Uh, I'm going to start, actually, I'm gonna say that this person was born in 1980. Right, so that I can show how this loops. And I'm going to have a duration of 95 years, okay? Starting value, what did I say, $2,000? was what they were given at birth. And we're gonna say that they don't touch, they don't touch or they don't have enough money to contribute until they're age 18. So the first contribution is gonna be age 18 they're gonna contribute from age 18 to age 60. So that's 42 years, right? So they contribute 42 years. And then when they turn 18, they're gonna contribute $1,000, right? You might not have $1,000, but um, at age 18 to contribute to your investment, uh, maybe you have 300 or 500. You can just quickly change that number. Uh, let's say I had $300 that for my first contribution a year, okay? I also want this person to scale their contributions with inflation, right? So they're not just putting $1,000 in every year, they're gonna put 1,000 the first year when they turn 18, and then when they turn 19, they're gonna put $1,017 in. I wanted to start showing the growth, and then we'll get into the distributions. So 
as we look at the, the growth, right, we started with the 1980 sequence because we're modeling or we're showing how a person would have, um, you know, who was born in 1980, how, how that $2,000 would have played out. So from 1980 until 1997, uh, 1996, I guess they'd be 17 years old, that $2,000 without touching it in 100% stock portfolio, again, using the four fund strategy, would have turned, turned into $29,000. At age 18, they start to, they start to contribute uh, to, their, to their IRA or whatnot. And the, it begins to grow, right? So at age 18, that, that $29,000 would have turned into $39,000. And then up until age 50, you can see how it, how it grows significantly, right? Up until we get to age uh, 782, I'm sorry, until we get to age 50, the value is 782, 155. We can continue the growth trajectory, uh, seeing year over year how it returns. And by the time that person turned 60, you know, they would have been at $4.7 million in that portfolio. They stop their contributions at age 59, right? And at that, in that final year, they're only contributing $4,500 each year. The thing though here is that you, when you model it in this way, or you, you kind of configure the tool in this way, the 100% stock allocation for somebody who's 60 years old probably is a bit risky, right? Uh, yes, of course, the growth could happen, but at any given time, as you're starting to rely on this you know, fixed income, you know, you could have significant volatility, right? Just a few years later, you know, you could, you could experience the worst market or you could experience the best market. And that volatility, um, I guess you have too much gas at, that, at this point, as Paul would say. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually suggest that this person changes their asset allocation at age 50 from 100% stocks to 60% stocks. And so in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to run through uh, and reconfigure the parameters on the right-hand side. In order to do that, we have to write some of these numbers down because we have to then go and input them uh, in the parameters. So the important ones uh, are when the person turns 50, right? The sequence of returns year is 1978. You can see that it's looped through, right? Uh, the value that was being contributed in that year was uh, $2,569. The, the starting value of that year would be the end of year balance from the previous year, right? So it's 678 751, right? Because, uh, so just so you're following along, right? The starting value would be the, f the end of the 49th year. And we want to start, we want to shift our allocation on January 1st of the 50th year of this person's life. So with those uh, one, two, three, four numbers, we're going to now set the parameters on the right-hand side here. So we're shifting from 100% stocks and bonds allocation to 60%, right? Uh, there's a little nuance here. You see how this window stays up? You have to click off it uh, for it to, to be available. The first sequence here we said was, we wrote down was 1978. The duration in this case, right? We're trying to, to show age 45, I mean, age 50 through age 95. So the duration is a 45 year duration. Now, the starting value, uh, what we wrote down was 678.751. Okay. We're continuing contributions from age 50 to 59. So the first contribution year was year one now, right? Because we're resetting. And the contribution duration is nine years. All right. The contribution amount per year, we wrote that one down. Uh, in the first year was $2,569, all right? And we want to continue to scale our contributions. So we have, we set up the contribution and, you know, the, the table here. 
but we haven't yet done the dirt, the distribution. So the first distribution year, right, we're talking about a 50 year old at this point is gonna be year 10 because we want the distribution to, to go um, when they're 60, to start when they're 60. And the distribution duration in this scenario is 35 years, right, from age 60 to 95. All right, now we're gonna to toggle between fixed and flexible distribution. So you'll see that the end of year balance and the dollar return and dollar percent, again, is gonna to change to uh, end of year balance distribution and then the cumulative distribution. So when we reset the calculator, we can now see that we can now see the glide path of this person. It's, it became more conservative when they turned 50, right? Uh, and they still grew their balance for the subsequent nine years uh, in this 60% stock and 40% bond allocation to $3 million. And on their 60th birthday, right, they decided uh, that they were going to start taking distributions. And they pulled out 4%, that's down here in the bottom right-hand side, of the previous year's end of year balance. So 4% of the $3 million. And then that remaining value uh, ran and experienced the return. And it, uh, it uh, returned 2.9, uh, the end of year balance on the first year of distributions was $2.9 million. Since we chose the fixed distribution strategy, scaling with inflation, the next year we're gonna scale that for that original 4% with inflation and we're gonna pull out $126,000 from the 2.9 million at the end of the year. We're gonna experience that, that, uh, that year's return and it grew that year uh, to from 2.9 minus 126 uh, to $3.3 million. And so that's how you're able to see this, this uh, chart play out over time. You can see this person, uh, it's an interesting scenario actually, because they get, you know, very large returns and they're still, you know, only pulling out this, uh, you know, this inflation adjusted value. Uh, over time. So they're, they've got $26 billion in the bank, but they're only pulling out $274,000. Um, so that's an interesting, I guess, conundrum or situation to be in. The flexible distribution will pull out that percent each year. So based on the vo volatility of your asset allocation, uh, you're, you'll pull out more this year or you'll pull out less. And so you're pulling out, when you get into these larger numbers, of the $14 million, you're pulling out 4% of that and you have, uh, you're pulling out five, $500,000 each year. You can, you know, flip this through as I showed earlier for uh, real uh, terms. And you can see that that is $141,000 in today's dollars, uh, $141,000 of purchasing power in today's dollars. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the chart again and I'll show uh, one last scenario. This time I wanted to show uh, someone who, I think Paul, one of his most popular articles was to show how a $365 per year investment for a child who's just born uh, plays out over 70 years. So we're able to model that uh, pretty straight in a straightforward way. So if we've got zero dollars uh, as a starting value, we have a duration of 70 years. First sequence year, 1970, would be fine. Uh, our first contribution year is year one, and we want to do 70 years of contributions. But in the contribution, we only want to have one dollar a day, right? $365. We're not going to scale that because that's uh, that's what hasn't, you know, that's what's been uh, what's been promised or been, been noted previously in the podcasts. I'm also gonna kind of strip out some of these uh, asset allocation, right? For a newborn, you know, we wanna go super risky again and we'll show 100% stocks and 0% bonds. You can see for the 70 years, we only contribute a dollar a day, right? And you can see how that grows uh, into the tens of millions of dollars uh, because of time and market, right? It seems as though there's some kind of a threshold here that you that you hit, where uh, where the compounding really um, takes off. So, 
in this year, there was a 43% return. Uh, the year the year prior to it, there was a 51% return in this four fund US strategy. Uh, and those had very, very large, right? So you went from $1 million to 1.6, and then you jumped up again to 2.2. So those, those uh, when you get into very large numbers and you get returns like that, it's incredible what, uh, what compound interest can do. Uh, also, if you wanted to compare the four fund US versus the four fund worldwide, or interestingly, the all small cap value US, you can see directly just by toggling the strategy, how that different allocation, I'm sorry, that different strategy would have played out within the same allocation, right? So instead of in the four fund US, in the four fund US strategy, we were at uh, $16 million after the 70 year period. But in the, in the all small cap value US strategy, of course, super risky comparatively, uh, you are at $47 million uh, at, after 70 years, just uh, contributing $365 per year. The final thing that I wanna go through is how to download this, uh, your work, right? So I've just exited full screen and I have set some parameters here still just showing the $365 per year. So nothing's changed when I removed the full screen. In the bottom right-hand corner, you have a download button. And we use Tableau for the underlying uh, calculations. The Tableau Public uh, is a, an online uh, dashboard and business intelligence platform. It supports exporting your work as um, in multiple formats. So in this situation, we can export it as a crosstab. If you wanted to print it, we can export it as a PDF. Or if you were really interested in digging in, you can see how the Tableau workbook functions. So you could download your own version of Tableau and then, uh, and then see how the, how the calculator uh, works. So I wanted to download the scenario that I've just come up with into Excel. In order to do that, you just hit the crosstab button and I'm displaying the growth scenario, uh, the growth chart. So, uh, so we're gonna create an Excel spreadsheet of the growth chart. I'm gonna open that one up and I need to actually get it here. All right. And what you're seeing here is the output of the, the foundation of what you had in the screen, right? So we're only showing, you know, these, the, the, the columns match up, the year sequence contribution, and then we're only showing the one allocation, 100% stocks, 0% bonds. Uh, the columns are named a little bit differently uh, than they are on the dashboard. Uh, that's kind of a, an underlying um, nomenclature. And we present the color coding. So if it's one in the far right hand color, then it will show up as red. If it's zero, it'll, it won't show up as red when you, when you see it on the dashboard. I wanna recommend that, you know, we've just downloaded this Excel workbook, but by default, Tableau doesn't give us the parameters that we selected. So I recommend that you type them in, or you could take a screenshot of this page, and then you would know if you wanted to get back to this scenario, uh, what you would have to select and what you'd have to enter in the parameters on the right-hand side to be able to get this exact same uh, output. As you, you know, work with this tool, I'm sure you'll have many different versions of the spreadsheet. I've downloaded 13 apparently uh, as of this recording. And uh, you can you know, just take a snapshot of the different scenarios that you worked on uh, with the calculator. So with that, I wanna go ahead and uh, wrap up. I wanna thank you for tuning in and sticking with me uh, for this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, I want you to know that there are many videos to come. Uh, we're planning a sequence of, uh, of, or a series of videos that allow you to see different scenarios play out. So we're envisioning you know, people who are just about to retire, uh, people who are interested in leaving money to their heirs, uh, modeling different scenarios like uh, paying for your kid's college, right? And, and the impact that that might have on your, on your investing strategy, or maybe something like a divorce where half of your, uh, your net worth gets split between 
uh, between households. So that's, uh, that's going to be part of the YouTube channel. And uh, we really look forward to uh, seeing how this calculator augments the work of the foundation so far. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions. Uh, we'll continue to modify and improve the tool. We will update the frequently asked questions and ensure that the website continually gets, uh, gets reworked to provide a good experience for, for the community. Thank you.